And for more, we say hello to the man at the top of our personal leaderboard, CBS senior golf writer Kyle Porter. Uh, KP, Brian Harmon authoring his name here into the canon of golf history with four days of near perfection, really. Uh, we've had some time to mull this possibility over 48 hours or so. Uh, your emerging thought is what coming out of this dominant performance from Brian Harmon? Yeah, the butcher of Hoy Lake. Listen, my, my, my emerging thought is that sometimes with guys like Brian Harmon, Brian Harmon's not a, he's not a generational talent. He's not a superstar. He's not a, a John Rahm or, you know, somebody like some of the guys that he beat. But sometimes the four days of your life matches up with one of the four weeks that matters most in this sport. And that's what happened this week with Brian Harmon. Joe, we talked yesterday. I thought he won this golf tournament on Thursday and Friday because when you get ahead, as, as far as he did uh, on Friday, he had a five-stroke lead going into the weekend. Mm -hmm. You can play the golf course differently. Strategically, it just you don't have to take on as much risk on some of these holes where there's pot bunkers, there's internal out of bounds. I thought he was brilliant on the weekend in terms of the way he mentally handled himself. It, it was just he's an extraordinary competitor. I thought he really showed that when he got into some trouble on or early on Saturday and then again early today. Uh, when he got a little bit tight, he, he just bounced back from that. It was it was a performance for the ages from an, maybe an unlikely source, but we see this in golf and that's the beauty of it is that it's a meritocracy and somebody like a Brian Harmon can go out, have the best week of their entire life on the golf course and win an open championship. Yeah, great to see him show some love to the fans who offered him little throughout the week. Uh, there are a number of ways to frame, as you put it, this unlikelihood, uh, but coming out of this moment, to not have won in more than five years and then dismantle a royal test. How are you going to explain these four days to your kids, let's say a decade from now? <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to go inside and explain it to them right now. I mean, it's, it's very difficult. And, and again, like this is golf. I think the best way to sort of illustrate this is to go straight to our guy, Rory McIlroy, who, who in seven of his last eight majors. So if you take the 2023 Masters out of it, look at all the majors last year and then the other three this year. He's beaten 97% of the guys that he's faced, and he's won none of those. And if you look at Brian Harmon, he didn't have a top 25 at a major this year, mm. and now he's got a major, a, a Claire Jug, you know? So golf is inexplicable at times. And, you know, the way that Brian Harmon played, he hit the ball great this week. I, I think I will look back, if you're looking at just like, on course statistical analysis. I look back at what he did on Friday, shooting 65, made everything he looked at, chipped in a couple times. And again, you build up that lead and it gets a little bit easier to explain, you know, how, how somebody can kind of hold all these great champions uh, at bay over the next 36 holes. Uh, KP, these are the moments that define players. And no, he is not generational, but this is a moment forever. And these are the types of moments that elevate remember that guy to heck of a career maybe we could say what does this mean for maybe the way we remember Brian Harmon not to go too big picture coming out of this moment but it is a massive moment for what he will look back upon as the crowning achievement of his career yeah I think what's interesting about that it sort of highlights the past and what I mean by that is Brian Harmon talked on Saturday about how he's really proud of the fact that he's made 12 straight FedEx Cup playoffs you know and that's not something that you and I are delving into and saying man can you believe Brian Harmon's made 12 straight FedEx Cup playoffs but it does shine a light on like hey this guy's been a, a good pro for a long time and that consistency at a really high level in the strongest, most competitive league in the golf world is is really impressive. And I think, you know, you're going to look back and say, man, Brian Harmon won a major, played on a Ryder Cup team. He's going to be on that U.S. Ryder Cup team uh, almost certainly in September in Rome. And then it'll kind of open up the door to what he's done in the past, which is win, you know, several times on the PGA Tour and be just a really consistent, good player uh, going, you know, throughout his entire career. Uh, we've seen players like Tiger Woods win by large margins here at Hoy Lake and all over the world, frankly. But Brian Harmon has done something that not Tiger nor any other since 1934 has done. That's lead by five shots following the final three rounds of a major championship here, uh, the Open Championship specifically. 1934, Henry Cotton did it. That was the last. So maintaining sure. that lead throughout the week, I know you had that one tucked away, Kyle. I, I need not <laughs> offer it to you. Uh, you alluded to a name that we talk about a lot, both on air and off, you and I, but there are names between Harmon and McElroy on that leaderboard, but another near, near miss, uh, it does warrant a debrief. Seven, as you said, top eights in his last 
eight majors, I believe. Uh, we're 263 days away from his next shot at the Masters, and that seems to be the one that perpetually eludes him. The one that follows that is the place where he last succeeded at Valhalla. History, scar tissue, the law of probabilities. I mean, take me where you want here. It all seems to be in play. How do you define this major season for Rory? Well, it, yeah, it's it's hard, right? Because it, it, and this is the infuriating thing about golf. He he, I, honestly, like if I look back at his last two majors, show LACC and this one, I'm thinking, man, this is kind of as good as he's ever hit it. Now, could you look at at so let's say 2014 Rory or 2012 Rory and say like there were some shots in there that. He just, he, he was he was innocent back then, right? He was a kid and he just hit some insane shots that he maybe wouldn't take on now. Yeah, for sure. But I think you even talked to him about this and he's like, I'm a more complete, more consistent golfer now. And yet the irony is he used to win more, at least when it comes to majors back then. So that's an infuriating thing for somebody like that. But I think that, I think his mindset, he talked about this afterwards today, and I think it's right. His mindset is, hey, keep giving myself shots, keep giving myself shots. One of these times, a Brian Harmon or a Wyndham Clark isn't going to pop up and, and and win the, you know, have the week of their life and win the tournament. And that's what you, that's all you can do in golf is give yourself shot after shot after shot. And I would argue, Joe, that he's done that in, in, in a better way this last 13 months than he did in the six years before that. He's got a bunch of top tens in majors, but there wasn't real contention for like five or six mm. years there. A lot of those were backdoor. A lot of these were maybe not front door, uh, some of them were, but at least side door. And so I think he's, I think he's actually, though the, the, the result remains the same in, in terms of top 10, I think he's actually getting closer to win a major, winning a major than he was the last five or six years. Yeah, he's been better than that stretch from 16 to 19, but waiting for someone not to win it and going out and taking it are two completely different things. I think we're seeing that former strategy rather than the latter outlined by uh, playing the front nine seven under here this week back nine one over throughout the week for Rory McIlroy. He will sit he will wait and we will see him uh, prior to the Masters but for major distinction we will wait till that day. Uh, this major season KP it's officially behind us. It's sad to say always is the four who bear this distinction Rahm and Green Brooks is back gone with the Wyndham and the performance may be befitting a Bulldog here on Sunday if, if we're filing major champions under expected or unexpected. I think there's a clear line to be drawn here this season. Uh, broadly, do these four tell you anything in particular about the state of the game, perhaps? Well, I think what's interesting, the, the, the place my mind goes just when I stare at these four guys, it's a pretty random collection of guys, mm -hmm. to be honest. There's not a lot of people at the beginning of the year that would have said, hey, this is going to be the four guys, but it goes straight to the Ryder Cup because they're, they're, you're right, there are no majors for, for nine more months, but there is a, a massive event in September, and all four of those guys are almost certainly going to be at that event. Rom on the European side, and Rom was part of a contingent, we haven't talked about this, on Sunday at the Open Championship that there was a lot of Europeans in the top six, you know, at, at the end there. You had you had Rory, you had Rom, you had Fleetwood, you had Sepp Straka. That, that, that's an impressive showing from that group. And then on the American side, you've got some guys maybe going in the wrong direction, Justin Thomas and Dustin Johnson, but guys like Brian and Harmon and, and Wyndham Clark filling in uh, their spot. So that's the first place that my mind goes to when I look at those four guys is, man, the Ryder Cup's going to be a hell, of event and a hell of an event in Rome. We can't wait for that. We can't wait for the next opportunity to talk to our guy Kyle Porter as the Claret Jug has a new home and that's the home of Brian Harmon. KP, we appreciate you.